The following program is sponsored by The Greek, Ely's Radio Shack Dealer at 570 Altman in downtown Ely, and brought to you as a public service by Georgetown Media in Ely, Nevada. White Pine County Commission Meeting, June 14, 2023. All fingers. All fingers. All the fingers? Yeah. <laughs> I know how you are. Commission, the Fire Commission, and the Liquor Board. Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. Would you all please rise and follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Silence, silent invocation of your choice. Thank you. And our next item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have any public comment on, on the line? Okay. Come on up. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Oh, hold on just one sec. We've got one in the room first and then we'll get to you. Okay. Yeah. Carrie Pintar, May 11th and August 11th, 21, quick claim deeds were filed for JCR's 13 lots on 17th Street, the Summerall's four lots on Park Avenue, respectively. All construction on these bargain price lots, $100 total, was to begin 90 days from the date of execution with construction completed within 36 months. Now fast forward to today and two plus years later we've gained only two houses, no infrastructure begun, let alone complete, and the only one who profited from the county's lack of good judgment was JCR, having sold six of those lots for the tidy sum exceeding $180,000. One lot was sold for $45,000 just six days after the county quit claim deeded it to them. My biggest problem with JCR selling off these four lots now on 17th Street to White Pine Construction is now there are two developers on that street. Which one is responsible for the infrastructure? How can the county repossess the lots that haven't been built on when JCR no longer owns them? I purchased a house back in 2000 that was developed by White Pine Construction and the then building inspector did not enforce the city code requiring Weaver to complete the infrastructure. Subsequently, I lived on a dirt road in the city of Ely for 17 plus years. Councilman Bybee back then told me that uh, the I knew the house was on a dirt road when I purchased it and subsequently that was not the city's problem. However, I beg to differ as selective enforcement of code is your problem. Excuses are like assholes and we all have one and I am personally sick and tired of hearing COVID is to blame these days for the delays that Commissioner Howard explained to me at the February 22nd, 23 meeting. Our local government has no business being in the real estate business, period. We have learned this and should have prior to the purchase of the single home that's count employee housing on June 17, 22, that the county paid 219,000 for. Now on August 24, 22, Commissioner Howe requested Summerall provide an update on the project in which he berated him for a 15 month lapse and no progress on this project. 
Summerall was again asked to appear before the commission on November 16, 22, to provide yet another update. Unable to attend, he texted Mr. Weevil and the item was to be placed on the December 15th agenda. This did not happen, so who dropped the ball? To date, JCR has not been asked to provide any update on when construction might resume on 17th Street. Again, selective enforcement, as Mr. Tatchis says. Why are Summerall's called into the principal's office and JCR is not? Is it because you can all acknowledge JCR is in over their heads, having been awarded $1.75 million in SNPLA grants last year? Many jobs awarded, started, timeframes exceeded, and none completed. Now fast forward to May 25th, 23, and Councilman Allworth invited Mr. Weevil to appear before the council and provide an update at the June 8th meeting. He did not attend, and although DA Beecher did dial in via Zoom, he offered no response. Instead, the request for yet another update from Summerall was placed on your agenda today. Where is JCR? Excuses, 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 and shame on all of you. Our public comment on the phone? Good morning. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, my name is Rhiannon Scanlon, and I am a development associate for the White Pine Pump Storage Project. I just want to take a few moments to provide an update regarding the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission's licensing process and our efforts to address the issues. Uh, they um, issued a letter on April 28th um, to our plus, which identified several deficiencies in our final license application for the project. They also requested some additional information. I want to emphasize that this is a standard part of the FERC licensing process, and it also presents an opportunity for us to enhance the quality of our application. Uh, I am pleased to inform you that our plus Hydro has responded promptly to each of the deficiencies and submitted a formal response with clarifying information earlier this week. We are confident that the information provided to FERC um, will effectively address the issues raised. Uh, regarding the additional information requests from FERC, our Club Hydro is ready to submit our responses to FERC by the proposed deadline of July 27th. Um, one thing to know upon further review, uh, on May 25th, FERC sent another letter to our Club effectively withdrawing a few of their requests as it was determined that the information provided in the FLA, the final license application, was sufficient and no more inf uh, additional information was needed related to those specific requests. Uh, another uh, thing to note regarding the progress of the project, um, we have been in uh, frequent consultation with the National Park Service and the Northern Nevada Railway uh, on the scope and content of some supplemental study work related to visual aesthetics. Uh, we have resolved the majority of those concerns, and uh, this week we are initiating a survey effort to help uh, move along that supplemental study work. We would like to keep you updated as we move forward in the licensing process, as well as any other project development. Um, please feel free to always reach out to either me or Greg, um, and just thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Further public comment? No one else there? Do we have further public comment in the room? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, again, I re uh, repeat my request for addressing <coughs> and setting up a victim's fund for those that have suffered different losses and have not been given consideration by the legal and law enforcement system. There's an ongoing graffiti <coughs> problem by vandals in the community, in particular Avenue B and 8th Street. They're spray painting the facility down there, the misspelling fun. They're putting the C and the K in there, which is not allowed. I took another picture the other day, and it shows some younger people in that area. If you pass that around, please. You need to address that. I've never seen graffiti this bad in this community. <coughs> I don't care what uh, some of you had where you came from, but don't bring your BS here. We're going downhill, folks. The image we're projecting is not good. Mr. Chairman, the new courthouse complex is still not in compliance with federal ADA requirements on the southeast corner where there's a handicapped parking uh, area. There's no ramp for access, only two steps which impede those using a wheelchair. The building inspectors failed you, and the correction needs to come out of his pocket 
for the commission as a whole. You may not selectively enforce federal standards or requirements. Mr. Chairman, the commission needs to address the makeup of the Tourism and Recreation Board. Some are not residents of Media or Whitefine County, do not own property, operate or work in a hotel or motel. Some are not attending the meetings in person, only by Zoom. If they lived in Whitefine County, they would, not be, they would need to be present. COVID precautions <coughs> are not mandated, and those members, as well as the chairman of the board, are flaunting the law. Informational signs are being put up around the community, which is good. However, they're listing uh, different sites and recreation offerings. The signs do not indicate direction or mileage distance. Why don't they put up the planets, Pluto or Uranus? This is crazy. A lot of money is being spent with little or no results. The convention center is not promoting conventions or gaming the state in the NRS. The setup, the tour and rec board, the board needs to be changed. Chairman Caroline Bath McIntosh needs to be removed. Mr. Chairman, uh, <coughs> Different uh, meetings I've uh, expressed some concerns in regards to violations by previous members and present members of the uh, Planning Commission as well as City Council and County Commission. I've given the uh, information, no action yet, and needs to be addressed. Mr. Chairman, uh, at a previous meeting, uh, March 22nd, 2023, you had me removed from the meeting and have not answered any of my questions. Your district attorney office that, uh, presented NRS 281A.420 to me at a recent planning commission meeting. The NRS <coughs> deals with conflicts of interest and family relationships. The DA, as well as you, have not disclosed your family relationships at all, <coughs> at all county matters when they come up. Very good, sir. That's your time. Thank you. You need to address that. Further public comment? Going once, going twice. Okay, we're going to move into our notice of time to agenda items. Item A, 9 a.m., the Fire Commission. Number one, discussion update on Fire District progress. Cortland Hall, Interim Fire Chief, and Pat Stork, City of Ely, Fire Chief. Looks like we're missing a couple of fire chiefs. No, and we're both tied up. Okay. Uh, Patrick, the call this morning is, uh, I don't know, uh, meetings. And then I have a small report here for um, Cortland's little update. Baker had four calls, Cherry Creek responded to three, Coal Creek didn't have any, Lackawanna responded to four, Lund had been busy with eight, McGill responded to ten, Group nine, Spur 12, 38, that's seven to the next time. Um, the stations, here's some update. Baker Power, there's been a service upgrade for 200 power upgrade. Uh, Baker didn't work on that. The Coal Creek floor, uh, the concrete floor has been poured, and they're working on getting the walls One of the big improvements that we were talking about earlier this winter. Um, Lackawanna received a command truck from McGill because McGill, um, there was a big switch once we got the new truck for roof. There was a big switch of roof, and Lackawanna received a new command truck. And then um, looks like they're working on concrete for to finish the apron out at Lund on the concrete apron that approaches the, the station. And then all stations are continuing training to the exterior support firefighter training. They're all working on that right now. And they're currently looking still for grant funding for upgraded SCBAs. Uh, there's been some discussion on how many they're going to need. Uh, the first, they're trying to get a bunch of them. But we don't know how many they actually need. The parts are outdated, most of them. And uh, it's difficult to get parts for them. They're Honeywell models. Court reports that we he believes we need 75 for the district and about $10,000 a piece. So that's three quarters of a million dollars for SCBAs. But I think this is something we probably That's county and city both? County. It's just the county? Mm -hmm. I believe, though, talking with Pat, and I think Lori was in part of that discussion, that we can probably pay for that. We can do a handful a year. Yeah. Um, other than that, that's what we have from the fire district. We're currently still recruiting for the fire chief position. It is open and closes next week. I have received one application. Very good. Does anybody have any questions or comments for them? Very good. Thank you, Mike. 
And now we're going to move on to uh, item A, right on time. Uh, our 9.15 a.m. update from Endow, number one.